he built me this. That's Sun House. You gotta put our daddy recording. on the back of it. Man. <laughs> was recording up in Grafton at the furniture store, man. And you get some incredible music. I went down to the crossroads, fell down on my knees. seat in there. There we go. Oh, we got water. Thank you, sir. Just plop it down. I'll just sweat it out. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Give it up for Jim Llewellyn. He's the owner, proprietor, manager, and a good friend right here at the York Emporium in York, PA on Market Street. Thank you for that, Glenn. But Jim Lewin. Jim Lewin. Thank you very much. Right. So is Jim Lewin. I got it right now. Sorry about that. Wow. All right. So he was talking Blues Brothers. So it took me a while to figure it out. Robert Johnson wrote this one too. And it's my whole town.
Bringing it, boss. <laughs> y'all feel the love out there? Shane Spiel, y'all. Okay, so the next question is straight up. Yo. Core thing. What got you caught by the cigar box guitar bug? I can tell you what it is in my life. You tell me what it is in your life. Simple. Okay. I started out in the 80s with hair almost as long as yours. <laughs> well, <coughs> it's still was, mine, what's left of it. When I was in junior high, I was buying hard rock and heavy metal cassettes, including uh -oh. Hostage by Res Band. Uh -oh. oh, yeah. And I was uh, into all that hard rock, heavy metal stuff. But then whenever I went into college, I uh, had a Jimi Hendrix cassette. And on that cassette, I played it, and there was a song that went... Great house. And that got me. And the blues just got me from there. But the thing is, with the blues, you start with, you know, Hendrix or Led Zeppelin or those cats, but then you start going backwards in time. And then, oh, you want to find out who influenced them, and you learn about Muddy, and you learn about Howlin' Wolf. But then you ask, who went before them? And that's where I discovered, oh, the beautiful Mississippi John Hurt, and I discovered Sun House, and I was loving them. And then in the early 90s, another cassette came out called Trimmed and Burned. Uh-oh. By Kaiser Mansfield. Never heard of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you introduced me to Blind Willie Johnson. Ah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And by that time, I wanted the blues that were so gritty and so deep that it was almost like one step deeper than the Delta blues. So in my search for the grittiest, deepest blues, I came across a story about, it was of Carl Perkins who built a two-string cigar box guitar. There it is. Yep. And it was a black sharecropper, I think he called him Uncle Jim, yeah. that taught him how to play. And it was two strings played with a slide. So I thought, that is what I'm looking for. I am looking for that gritty sound that is so broken from the beginning that it's made from a box and a stick. And from there, I've never been the same. I made my first on July 4th, uh, 1993. And I've built thousands since, and, and it's all I play. I mean, well, for me, I have to tell you, it was, you know, I don't get, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up a six string tonight at one point. I'll do a couple songs on that. I don't consider myself much more than a utility guitarist. Ah. I don't. I played in, you know, bands for a long time and blues bands for a long time. And uh, there, came a, there came a point, though, as a res band, we did like, what, 16 albums in 28 years. And, uh, a lot of touring and this and that, but I, I continue to do acoustic music. And for me, blues was always the core. If I would have only done purely what I personally would have wanted to do, I probably would have never gone beyond blues. Wow. Um, I grew up. You're talking you for songs you've done like Defective Youth, you know, do, doing some crazy hard stuff. I can the do blues it. was still in your heart. Well, as it was. It was. Look, Book of Psalms, biggest book of the Bible, right? You end up. I, I became a Christian. I came up through, you know overdoses and addiction and all the rest of it. And there came a point in time where studying the scriptures, what freaked me out, and it's weird because a lot of people don't know this, even those that you know proclaim faith right, in, in Jesus. The biggest category in the book of Psalms are laments. 57 of the 150 Psalms, blues. It's Strong a book of the blues. It absolutely yeah. is. Fallen, fallenness of you. God, where are you? Need yeah. yeah. And some of them don't end on a good note. No. Not many, but there's a few of them that don't end even on an up note. There's just like Lament is about struggle and pain and the brokenness and the reality, which of course took me full circle in my heart back to the music that never left me. Right. And for me, it's like, okay, we know what you can do with six strings. And I started to challenge myself as time went on. And before I found out about CigarBoxNation.com or, or CB Giddy or you, I think I told you tonight, I lurked on, on that thing. And by the way, I'm not paid to do this. If it sounds like infomercial, I'm a fan, honestly. That's how I came into all this. So I started building. I had a little cookie uh, tin, a metal box, and stuck a, one of those in it, and I'd hunk a wood laying around. And I started with four strings, and I thought, I'm cheating. So I took it down to three, Ooh. which I won't hardly play. I've got one four-stringer. It's a bedpan that a guy gave me. And I <laughs> went, anyway, that's a whole other story. I didn't bring it on this tour. But... I got to a place where I thought, okay, great, three strings, sometimes two, like your chuggers yep. that you make, 
and then um, finally one string. Because there's something about the feel. Now, I'm not even sure where this is tuned, Shane, so... I'll let you take this one. With a diddly bow, you, well, don't, you don't mess with a diddly bow. I had no idea. Again, I thought Earl Burnside wrote this, North Mississippi All-Stars. Um, made him famous. Uh, well, he was probably kind of famous before they even showed up on the scene. But this is an old spiritual, right? And I'd heard this song, and I'm like, it's got to be R.L. because I never saw anybody else get credit. It's just this old public domain thing. He recorded it, and a bunch of others had. But I heard this stuff, and I'm like, so when you get down to one string, it better be from the heart. It better be the song. It better be the performance. Yes! Yes! Yes. It's got a, but it's the authenticity factor for me. And when I want to go into deeper blues, how do I challenge? I'd be mean, playing six string slide, lap steel. I have a beautiful Gibson, old, old Gibson lap steel. Some guy gave me, I mean, just amazing stuff. And, um, you know, this is, this cost me $2, I don't know, three pieces of stuff laying around. I bolt and wing nut. I love the It costs you the price of a tin of Altoids. <laughs> authenticity and inspiration because if the inspiration is not there then you're down to raw technique you know Absolutely. so you know but I'm going to ask you to do something what what Bond Willie tunes do you know what do you what are you comfortable doing and just name the key uh you know what we can do um uh you my time and dying whoa all right what key you got uh we'll do that in G did you say C G G got it See, we're well rehearsed. It's a living room show, people. 
You are, you are my kind of guy. There ain't nothing like jamming with people. I love it. See, we were we were emailing back and forth, and I, you know, I was asking Glenn what keys he would go in, so I'd make sure I bring the right guitar. And so he sent me some stuff, and he said, "Well, Shane, what, what songs are you doing?" And I had to email him back, and I'm like, Glenn, I never know what I'm going to play when I go on stage. <laughs> This one came in the mail today from a bro in Ohio named Gary. I'll give you his last name later. I'm spacing out here today. Thanks again to CB Giddy. They sponsored the Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Festival, which I've enjoyed doing. I'm not able to make it this summer, but I've been able to make it a couple times and absolutely enjoyed. And that's partly because of Jim, the proprietor here, his fault and Shane's fault. So the, the, the pleasure of being able to come and do music I love and hang with people. And I walk around and covet. And, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody wants everybody's guitar. We got about, I got about 20 of these, but it's one of those things. I don't know how you play it. I can follow along to you and... Uh... Don't worry about it, just go. All right.
things are therapeutic <laughs> but I hear this and I go well <laughs> okay help me out now I know we did, did, did we do leaving blues yet no well maybe what's going on oh, let me see what was I doing leaving blues um, what's up right let's go to F yeah got my whammy bar guitar out yeah woo That's so wrong. We can take it down a little bit into something. I'll be your Brewer Phillips. Be like how Mark Taylor's band. I'll play the bass guitar on the regular guitar. Bring it down just a touch. Yes, sir.
I'd rather see my coffin come in Right through my front door Than to see my coffin come in Right through my front door one's tuned and it's a whole different vibe but I gotta check this out so while I'm changing guitars how did the Pennsylvania Cigar Box Festival start I, I think I came what the second or third something like that like yeah you were your th third year I think what, what, what's how that? did it start I, it started because I was here in New York Aquarium spending a lot of my money on used books <laughs> which I tend to do a lot and uh, Jim <laughs> always hosts different events here and I mean he has everything from like Star Trekky things to I mean there's Star Wars people doing lightsaber battles out in his parking lot for certain festivals and I said you know it'd be cool to have a cigar box guitar fest and Jim's like I'll host it let's do it that was it I'll host it we'll pull a, pull a flatbed pickup truck outside we'll put a stage on it we'll have a stage in here you call up your friends to come play and we'll do it and so we decided to do it on the same weekend as a big arts festival in town so we could get all those folks involved. And uh, it's exploded. It's exploded. And it's a magical time, I tell you that. August 27th, York, Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Fest. Hey, real quick while we're in, in between here, I want to give a shout out to cbgiddy.com for sponsoring us tonight. Thank you, thank you. For cigarboxnation.com and for the York Emporium Bookstore here in downtown York, up, Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. I need to touch my phone for a minute. See, everything's being broadcast right there on my iPhone. Draining my battery. I'm gonna let you do something while I take care of the broadcast real quick. Okay. I'm gonna do something here. Train no 
Thank you for everyone tuning in to Cigar Box Nation Television. Now, who built this guitar here that you're playing? Well, this is a friend of mine. Check this out. He's named Tony Taylor. And he, I think he made it, maybe made it for a lefty and then passed it on. To me. <laughs> but these tobacco boxes, as you're aware, are really yes, loud. Yes, love them. And they, they sound, well, very, you heard that, very banjo-like. Acoustically, they, uh, they sound really cool. It's a whole different vibe. And what I really dug, you noticed it right away. For position markers, he uses these flathead nails. Nice. But just, he's an artist, and this is about as simple as Tony gets. He's down in like a little town called Potomac, Illinois, on the Vermilion River. And he and his dad, out of like bricks they grabbed from places that nobody wanted them anymore, they'd been sitting for years, and old barn wood, they built a two story shop. And if you go to his site, he's on Facebook, Tony Taylor, Potomac, Illinois. It's uh, Ascendant Instruments is, is the name of it. And he builds, like, you'll love this. He takes, like, he goes to yard sales and garage sales. And he finds, like, late 50s, early 60s kids' multicolored toy telephones. <laughs> and he puts delay boxes in them and nice. distortion pedals. <laughs> and and you, it's got, like, two switches. And you just, and they sound killer. I mean, they're just amazing. He's, he takes old radios and builds amps, but he right. does stuff with effects and puts them in boxes. You wouldn't, you just, you're looking at this thing and it's like this beautiful antique. And you realize, you know, it's just the most massive distortion pedal you ever heard, or wah-wah pedal, and it's like a rheostat. But instead of, you know, <laughs> you put it on the ground and you hit it with your foot and you get this, yeah. If you're, if you're, if you guys in the audience are, are new to this whole cigar box guitar thing, it may seem humorous to you, but that's part of the thrill, is taking absolute junk and turning it into, you know, instruments, into new things. I mean, it's no longer a thrill to just go get a guitar off the rack. We just want to get and just cobble these crazy things together and then just rock out with them. So, what do you want to do? Yeah. 
got to move from you, Glenn. No, no, no. Well, and we, was it plagiarism is the most sincere form of flattery? Is that how it goes? Yeah. No, it goes, uh, yeah. amateurs borrow, professionals steal. <laughs> there you go. Well, there's so many things I could do. Um, you got one in E? Sure I do. Pull a guitar up in E? Of course I got one. I'm going to plug in a six string for this for a moment. It's a signature song that I do almost every night. I want to thank Josh Guy from California for making me this cigar box guitar. This cigar box guitar has been with me in concert forever and it has flown across the stage at the end of almost every show. Two of my bandmates are here, they can they can attest to that. <laughs> I'll tell you now, me personally, part of it's because I'm a musician, I think, and a guitarist, but I completely dig the worn out uh, top of that fretboard. That's, that's the real deal there. Oh, you need a tetanus shot in order to play this guitar. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Here we go. Here we are. I love the sound of that little Zeppelin amplifier there. That, that thing is delicious. Yeah, it's a percolator. I'll leave 
this world tomorrow. Let them leave a little love behind. Too much pain and misery in this world. Yeah. Too much heartache and too much crying. If I leave this world tomorrow, I want to leave a little love behind.
He's gonna take me everywhere he goes now, cause I'm gonna be like a stray dog. You feed me once, and I'm gonna follow you everywhere. All right, man. Now you pick something, anything, do something. Oh, uh, you want me to do? You know what? Crank I, something up. All right. Oh, let me see. You know, I'm gonna do this, and I don't know what what you'll go. This is in G. Welcome to our front room. We've been doing blues all night. I want to hear. Take something else. I'm going to throw you a curveball. Because this song ain't blues, this is country. Maybe Johnny. Hey, hello. I'm not Johnny Cash, but he is. So this will be the, the sweet melody slide or any of that stuff in G.
Thank you. All right, all right. Let me do one for Wendy. Yes. Uh, my wife's here tonight, Wendy Kaiser. By the way, we're coming up on 44 years next week. Yes! And I'm not just punching the clock. Listen, anybody who'd be married to me for that long deserves some kind of star in her crown, man. <laughs> wow. Pretty amazing stuff. We were 19 when we got married. I ain't 19 no more. Hey, how are we doing on the broadcast? Let's get a couple thumbs up and some hearts to make sure you all can see us and hear us. Thank you all for tuning in here at Cigar Box Nation Television. So, uh, this actually came, this actually came up in, a, in an old burnout place that we have an inner city Chicago community, Jesus people, and we're, we're dealing with some pretty broken and hurting folks. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is a number of years ago, we, uh, we reclaimed an old four-story and uh, converted it for uh, safe housing. Um, we have a 4 in bed you know, shelter, and we have a whole lot of folks that are in need and come out of addiction and other issues, single moms with kids. And um, I was doing some woodwork, actually, on the first floor. And it, it, there'd been a fire in the place, and there was like plywood over the windows where the firemen had busted in the joint. We'd never quite gotten the first floor. And this is before we completely rehabbed the whole house. So we had this wood chop. There's like sawdust blowing around and stuff, and I'm covered with it from chopping wood and doing a whole bunch of stuff in there that day. There's one bare light bulb. And it's just this dingy old room with the fire, you know, soot everywhere. It's all blackened. And there's plywood over the window and a little slit between the plywood when they boarded the place up. And at that time, the, uh, the lot was vacant. It, bits of broken glass and pieces of busted concrete and wire. And it was one area in the street and then we would let our kids play and my, we raised several kids, you know, and, of course, we had a foster girl, and we're dealing with all sorts of uh, folks in this area of Chicago that are really poor and struggling. And because I came out of addiction and a suicide attempt and stuff, you know, my, my whole life was, was turned upside down uh, just, uh, just as I was turning 18. And um, I've never forgotten what it was like to be so completely empty and so no control. I mean, just any way you could do it, I did it. Uh, except for needles. I was right on the edge of shooting when I got turned turned upside down by Jesus. That's just the reality of it. And, uh, whoop. what a change in my life. And the bottom line is, when I looked out that little crack, in a split second, I thought about where I'd been. And uh, that's where this song came from. And but we all make choices every day, don't we? At the end of this tour, I'll be doing three max security prison shows in Ohio and two death rows. And uh, doing a lot of these songs and chatting with people about where I'd come from and, and a love that never, never ends. I'm a little amp here. I don't want to crank it too loud. I usually just... I, sometimes I plug right into the PA. I probably should have tonight, but made life simple. So I'm gonna just move, change mic over. Excuse me. So this is for my Wendy. This is a title cut of a new project. Half of the songs uh, I've redone. Uh, by the way, Shane. 10 out of 12 are cigar box guitars, all sorts of them, diddly bows and all the rest of it. Half the tunes are brand new ones, and I've actually got a whole other project full of new ones that were recorded, but I decided to go half and half on this one because I thought some of these songs should continue on because we've been doing, I've been doing them in concert for so many years. But. Tonight I 
might be of interest to folks you know what I'm gonna do audience here live and uh, we're, we're gonna do one thing all you people watching online we are now coming up to the 90 minute mark and okay. Facebook is going to turn this off so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna give you an encore what we're gonna do is stop the broadcast online do not go anywhere I want you to keep refreshing the page because we are going to start a new broadcast for the last half hour so you see the entire thing Whenever I hit finish, this screen is going to go black. Sit at your computer or your phone and hit refresh. And then we're going to go and give you an encore. So here we go. In three, two, one. No, no, no. Nicht for do. We just can't do it for everybody, but uh, there you go. Sweet. Well, anyway, here's one for you. Give us some diddly bow. <laughs> Give you a little lesson. Sweet vibrato separates the men and women from the boys and the girls, and it's a whole lot easier to do with the slide. And how I started playing was as a guy in Australia named Dave Hole, and he actually did an alcohol over the top. The only way he ever plays is like this. That's how I learned. And sweet vibrato, whether you're using your fingers on an electric or an acoustic, to really get it. Now, he's got a whammy bar on one of his. Maybe, maybe Shane will bring out his guitar with a whammy on it. C.B. Giddy's starting to do those, which is pretty amazing. But when you play slide, it's all about moving over the pitch. And check it out. Amazing grace. 
Yeah. Right? The soul, the feeling, is in the movement. And blues especially, and slide playing, you can get a sweet vibrato quicker than you can any other way without pain on the fingers, no calluses needed, you know, you don't press the thing down. You don't want the string off the neck for the strings. Yeah. So. I think people that don't even like blues, that don't listen to blues, that don't care about blues, are drawn into that form of music, and I'll tell you what, because it's the most human form, because all the solo, harmonica, sax, piano, as best as they can pull it off, slide guitar, cigar box guitars, vibrato. <laughs> Because it imitates the human voice. And people are sick and tired often. I mean, I, I actually dig electronica. Just, I'm all over the map. I'm very eclectic as a listener. I could probably do one of those bands, to be honest with you, except I'm not much of a keyboardist. But it's one of those things that it's the soul and the feeling and the emotion and the passion. And, and so for me, that's, I think, a big reason why slide guitar, way back when I was young, and then picking it up again in Res Band a little later, Child of the Blues and yes. some of those songs. And then, of course, digging into the early, early history of blues. And then finally, Diddley Bowes and Cigar Boss Guitar. Anyway, so here's another one off the new project. <laughs>
a harmonic in there. I can't quite get it to <laughs> Thank you. Ah, news for the blues. Good. News for the blues. You gave a shout out to One String Willie in there. There you go. I didn't tell you that he may show up tomorrow night at our game. Oh, dude, I hope so. He may be driving in from Philadelphia to come see us, and you know we got to pull him on stage. Willie, if you're on, if you're on, bring at least the two by four. Yes. <laughs> what an inspiration he is. What a trip. So we got about 20 minutes left. What you want to do here? Um. You got a favorite song that you haven't cranked out yet? Um, yeah, I do. Trust In the key of C, see it, is. it is it is my medley of field hollers and slave chants that I do that I call holler. Um, oh yeah, 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 got it. Right. Oh yeah. And, and you hear it in here now. A lot of people, you know, one of the the songs in the medley, you'll recognize it immediately. Uh, let me get a pick. Ah. I got an extra credit card I don't use. <laughs> The, the one song that you'll recognize in here is Black Betty. And Black Betty was not originally a rock song in the 1970s by Ram Jam. Black Betty was first recorded by Lead Belly, but the song dates even before that. Black Betty comes straight from um, prisons and, and even, even slavery times. That's where I got it on my, on my uh, Android phone. Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a couple different things. Some people say Black Betty was... In when they were building the levee camps in uh, in New Orleans, the uh, the the cart that the horse would bring up with the dirt was black, and they would call the cart Black Betty, and they would curse it because they hated seeing that cart show up. Other people say Black Betty was uh, um, the boss man in the prison rode a black horse, and so they couldn't curse him, so they would curse the horse. But then I just recently heard Black Betty was also a black whip that was in one of the prisons. So when they were out in the field, they could not curse the boss to his face. But they would come up with codes. And so Black Betty was one of them. And uh, so that's part of this. But all the lyrics here are from old um, field haulers, uh, slave chants. And uh, I just put it into one, you know, rock and medley called Holler. So in key C, it go like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
songs I'm working on is about the great Satchel Paige, who uh, was probably the greatest pitcher in baseball history, but unfortunately he played in the Negro Leagues before they would let him in. They finally let him in when he was in his 40s and he was still striking them out. Uh, so Satchel Paige is kind of one of my passions right now, and uh, I want to... Um, uh, do something like that. I gotta get a new album out. That's all I'm saying too. So, <laughs> again, inspiration. Inspiration everywhere. Don't just do the same old blues stuff. I mean, with Holler, that was my last album, and peppered throughout the whole album was these field haulers and slave chants because I felt like they were the grandfather of the blues and the great great grandfather of hip hop. And it is people just yelling back and forth, back and forth in the fields, getting this rhythm going. And I love one of the things I, I read about them working in the fields. You know, these are, if they weren't slaves, they were slaves in a modern time because they were imprisoned for sharecroppers. Yeah, stupid things. And, uh, but if they worked out in the field, and then the boss man said if he heard them singing their songs, he knew everything was all right. What he didn't know was the more they sang their songs, the slower they worked, <laughs> and the less they did. They could get it one over on the boss man by singing a little more, and you know, just uh, slapping the whip on the, you know, just doing it without letting him know. And I, I, I love that. It's the whole, almost the prayer rabbit uh, theology of. Uh, <coughs> Oh, the living life, getting one over on the boss, man. You know, the problem is, is that there's still a lot of injustice in the world. I, I have to tell you, for about three and a half years, I quit listening to white music. Uh, this is, you know, way before I began to follow Jesus. I mean, it, it just, I got tired of hearing stuff that I didn't, it didn't sound honest. And uh, when some dude sang, my baby left me, and I could hear the sweat hitting his wingtips. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Live gigs and stuff were just like, whoa. There's so much passion and genuineness. It just blew me away. And I mean, to me, again, that's what it's about. And unfortunately, for too many, uh, too many of what I was hearing at that time, it, it sounded more like, well, it sounded like cash registers is going off and like you know, <laughs> everything, had, everything had cellophane over it. You know, I mean, it's like <laughs> plastic stuff, you know. Look, question. I'm digging through for a lyric here because I, I did this back a long time ago as a kid. And... Uh, so I'm digging through a lyric, but how much time do we have? We got about, well, the clock at all says five minutes, but okay. being that we restarted this camera, what do you people online, what do you people think here if we go over five, ten minutes, something like that? Are you okay? Sound with good you? You all fine? You okay with Y'all fine if we break the rules a little? <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have done a couple of things, but uh, maybe we should uh, give this one a shot. And uh, let's go. Let's go to the F. Okay. There you go. Get the whammy. You're not an F anymore. You went way down to C. Oh, that's right. 
Sorry, let's swap over to that guitar. Okay. Is that G? I think that was G, isn't it? Uh, you're right. And yeah. G will work too. Okay, I got it. I got your back. Yeah. St. Blues Guitars out of Memphis, thank you for this one. This is a gorgeous cigar box guitar. Quite honestly, they're making some of the most top notch cigar box guitars out there. St. Blues out of Memphis. Did a project recently called Homes for Heroes, and there, it's like six uh, songs. It's a little compilation, and I didn't write them all, um, but I sang on several of them and played guitar on several of them. And, um, cigar bass guitar, nice. uh, dobro, six string dobro, played a little harp, a little harmonica, and sang some. And a guy named Jeb Brewer put that together. It's really a benefit project. We do have, by the way, some Homes for Heroes CDs. Yes, it's come to this. <laughs> wow, cool. I thought there was like fog in here tonight, Jim. What's going on? I wanted to get it right. Gary Menser. Now, this guitar Gary Menser made and just Gary made, Menser. It just showed you up beautiful here. work. He's in, in Dudney and it's broken. Gene Broke Shane, broken heart guitar. Broken heart right? guitar out of Ohio. Gary, thank you, my man. I'm, this is killing. I love it. Gee, Shane, where did those? It really is. Oh, an those I don't are have some to Shane, do this. Shane Spiel signature tuners from Gary, CB Giddy. <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary said, make sure that you tell uh, him, and so I'm telling y'all too, that everybody. Who uh, uh, who gets a guitar from from Gary? One of his cool builds. Um, he only uses Shane Spiel's signature. Yeah, boy. Hi, Ben. How's it going out there? How are we doing on the tuning? Good. So this song is on the uh, on the new project. And, uh, so, well, not the new project, uh, a long way from my home, but on um, on Homes for Heroes. All the proceeds, you can download the songs individually, the whole project, or tonight if you pick one up here, donation, whatever you want to give, just something. All that money that the Bridge Chicago put this, this compilation together, these six songs, all the loot goes directly to our shelter. And we see a lot of homeless people, a lot of vets. You'd be surprised how many veterans end up in jail or prison or in our and other shelters throughout the world.
Cigarboxnation.com. I'm up there about three or four times a day checking out all the cool spots. Jim Nguyen, Jim Nguyen here at York and Port. Give it up, you guys, yeah. for hosting this set tonight. Glenkaiser.com, two ends in Glen. Glenkaiser.com, new album coming out June 1st. Hey, we got a second show we're doing tomorrow night. If you're in the York area, York, Pennsylvania, the place is called The Pub on the Trail, Susquehanna Trail in York, PA. Uh, thank you so much, Shane, Cigar Box Nation Television. And ShaneSpiel.com as well, by the way. Thank you. Amazing information. He's got a boatload of vids as well, free instructional stuff that is absolutely killer on three, two, one string, daily, you, yeah. you know, four strings, the whole nine yards, and tunings, more than you'll ever want to know. <laughs> Not me. I love it. It's great. So thanks so much for tuning in, and thanks y'all for coming out to York and Porham tonight. Thank Look you at so the love. Much. Look at the love we got online. Look at all those hearts. <laughs> Thank you, too. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys, guys for coming. Love you all. See you soon. Pennsylvania Cigar Box Guitar Fest, August 27th.
here at the York Emporium Bookstore in downtown New York. See you all. Love you. Hey, my wife is on there. Hi, honey. See you soon. Bye-bye. That's all, folks. <laughs>